This video is sponsored by Brilliant. A wise man once said, AI is just a bunch of if statements. But how true is that? In the previous part, we looked at some basic building blocks you can use when building AI. If you haven't seen it yet, you could just click the link in the corner. This video, we're going to look at how you would combine multiple building blocks into an AI that can do multiple things in succession, such as finding where you are, walking towards you, picking an attack, and then attacking you. We need to find a way to let our AI gather information about the game world and then use it to make a decision. How much information our AI knows, the actions it can perform, and how well it can use that information to choose an action is what forms the basis of a solid, realistic artificial intelligence. There are many different ways to do this, but I'll try and narrow it down for you into a few powerful, commonly used options. Ultimately, a lot of these algorithms boil down to a bunch of if statements. But we implement the if statements in a very fancy way and give it a cool name. The most notable example of this are finite state machines. With finite state machines, we have a machine which has finite states. Wait, that doesn't explain anything. What I mean is that we create a limited set of actions which our AI can choose from a finite amount of states. But our AI can't just choose these actions at will. We add rules to connect these actions and determine which actions can lead to which. This is what makes it like a machine. Let's look at an example. Suppose we have a shooting enemy who's standing around doing its thing. As soon as he sees us, he should follow us around until he's in range and then start shooting. Already, we have a bunch of states. Idle, for when he's standing around. Follow, for when he should walk towards us, and shoot, when he should shoot at us. This is where some of the building blocks come in we looked at in a previous video. If you want to know how you can make an AI follow the player around while avoiding obstacles and navigating difficult terrain, you can watch the previous video about A star and Dijkstra's algorithm. Next, we need to determine how these states connect to each other. This is where the if statements come in. We start in our idle state. If we have a direct line of sight, we transition to the follow state. We stay in that state until we are within shooting range. If we are within shooting range, then we transition to the shoot state and shoot at the player. But we can also go back. If we are outside the shooting range, then go back to the follow state and try and get closer. This is a very simple example of a finite state machine. To make the AI seem smarter, we can add a lot more states and a lot more transitions between them. As you can imagine, these can grow very big very fast if you want a complex behavior. And even then, you will often find you didn't account for all possible situations, which makes them increasingly difficult to use the more complicated you want your AI to be. If you're not careful, your AI could get stuck in a state. Additionally, finite state machines are generally bad at quickly reacting to changes, which is often very important when dealing with fast real-time gameplay. Because of this, developers often go for behavior trees. If you've watched the channel before, chances are you know what I'm talking about when I mention a tree. A tree is just a bunch of nodes connected together from top to bottom. We start at the top, pick one of the children below it and work our way down. In a behavior tree, the bottom nodes, or leaves, result in an action our AI will perform. Similar to the finite state machine, we start with defining a bunch of actions. And then we add a bunch of if statements to choose which one of our actions we pick. Taking our example from before, our behavior tree will now look like this. But now, instead of staying in one state, we can traverse the full tree, or a part of it, to determine the action we need to do. The great benefit of this approach is that we can more easily react to changes in the game state, because we don't need to explicitly tell the game how it needs to transition from one state to another. We just tell it which requirements there are to reach a state, and then the tree will handle the rest. Because it's easier to think about than state transitions, Behavior trees are a lot better to work with for game designers than finite state machines. If you want to learn the skills to implement these algorithms yourself, you can head over to Brilliant.org and follow their courses on computer science and algorithm fundamentals. If you want to get into programming games, these will teach you the fundamental skills any programmer should know in very easy, bite-sized lessons you can finish in 15 minutes. It's a very easy way to learn if you're just getting started or want to brush up on the basics. Whether you're interested in computer science, math or science, Brilliant.org is the best way to learn these subjects interactively. There's even a course about making decisions, which explains how computers make decisions in an interactive way. It walks you through the computer's thinking process and how 
how it goes through all the options to come to a conclusion using decision trees. Brilliant has thousands of lessons like this with new ones added every month. To get started for free, visit brilliant.org slash digidigger or click the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Behavior trees and finite state machines are both rules based. This means they require you to specify all rules to perform the actions the AI can make beforehand. This set of rules then determines which of these actions they take. This can sometimes feel too predictable and it can be hard to create emergent behavior using these approaches. Therefore, there is also an alternative approach to decision making. Goal based AI. The main difference is that instead of specifying a set of rules, we specify a set of goals the AI would try to work towards. One framework to do this is to use BDI. Beliefs, Desires, Intentions. Beliefs represent the information the AI has about the world. It's called a belief because the information the AI has can be incorrect or incomplete. It is simply what the AI believes to be true at any given time. Desires are states the AI wants to achieve. For example, find the player, preserve health, damage the player, etc. Lastly, from these desires the AI chooses which ones it wants to commit to. These are called the intentions. The AI can use these intentions and optionally the intentions we have chosen previously to choose the actions it will perform. For example, it can have the intention of damaging the player but also the intention of increasing its health. So in that case it may choose to do an action that deals less damage but also steals health from the player. By defining these three main parts we can create an AI that looks at its environment, defines its desires based on those observations and finally picks the intentions from the desires it wants to see fulfilled. This approach means the AI might make decisions in a way we didn't specify beforehand and fulfill several desires of one action. All of this makes it feel like it's really making choices on its own rather than following the exact path we laid out. As an example, let's look at the AI we defined before and transform it into a BDI agent. For our agent to work, we need to define a couple of things. First, we define what information our AI will gather about the world. In our example, we'll look at where the player is and what our health is. Next, we need to define the desires our agent can have. Our agent can have the desire to find the player, move closer to the player, preserve his health or damage the player. Then we need to determine how our beliefs influence which desires we intend to fulfill. For us that would be, when we don't see the player, we try to find the player. When we do see the player, we can move closer, move away or damage the player. Which one we pick is based on the state of our own health and the distance from the player. And finally, we need to create a list of actions and define how the intentions we pick determine which actions we take. To see how this plays out, let's simulate a little scenario with these conditions. First, our AI takes a look around, checks its own health and sees where the player is. Because we're at full health, we will move towards the player. Next, the player hides behind a wall. Because our AI has lost sight of the player, it will try and find the player, starting at the last place he saw him. Once it gets around the corner, it can see the player again. This time, it's in range, so it will have the intention to damage the player. As he fights the player and takes damage, his intention to preserve its health increases, while his intention to hurt the player decreases. The weights of these intentions can result in different actions. For example, when his health is low enough, the AI might choose an action to poison the player and then run away instead. By making our decisions based on a list of intentions instead of preset rules, our AI can make smarter decisions, which might result in fulfilling multiple desires at once. In BDI, we can also take previous intentions into account when making decisions, preventing our agent from making the same decision over and over again. All of these things combined can result in some very interesting emergent behavior. This is something you can clearly see in Timebenders, a game me and my colleagues build. The game is about mages battling each other with powerful magic who are able to manipulate time. We are absolutely astonished by the complex behaviors that emerged from our BDI inspired AI. The AI could perform complex attack and defense combinations by using time manipulation and rewinding time at just the right moment for its attack to land. It was awesome. The last decision making algorithm we are going to look at is GOPE, Goal Oriented Action Planning. Like the name implies, GOPE is entirely focused on goals. The algorithm is most famous for its implementation in fear. To this day, it is renowned as one of the best examples of video game AI. So how did they do it? The way it works is that first we define an entire pool of actions. For each action we add what state the world needs to be in to perform the action, a precondition. 
and what state of the world changes after we perform the action, an effect. Next, we define a goal we try to fulfill. A goal simply describes the state we want the world to be in when all the chosen actions are performed. And finally, the action planner tries to string together actions so that the goal we set is achieved. Let's look at our example again, but this time we'll use a GOAP AI. First, we define the actions. We can search, our precondition is that we don't see the player, and the effect is that we do see the player. Next, we can attack. Precondition, we see the player. Effect, player is dead. Let's say we can also run, where we need to see the player first and then afterwards we don't. And finally, we add a heal action, which we only want to do when we can't see the player and our health is below 20. And the effect is that our health is 100. Now we have our set of actions, but without a goal, our AI won't do anything. So let's give it a goal. Kill the player. In order to reach our goal, we make a plan by working backwards from the goal. We look at the current state of the world and we choose which action achieves our goal. Attack. Then we see how we can achieve the preconditions of that action. And we see that one action results in us seeing the player. Search. Now we see that our chain is complete. We currently meet all the preconditions of our action chain and we see that our action result in achieving our goal. So we execute our plan. We search and then we attack. But what if we have multiple action chains that can achieve our goal? What if we can do a ranged attack and a melee attack? In that case, we have to choose from multiple action chains. To determine which chain we choose, we can assign a cost to each action. Maybe the ranged attack has a higher cost because it deals less damage. Our action planner will try to choose a chain with the lowest cost. So our AI will do a melee attack. We can even easily make the AI perform a sequence of actions without explicitly telling it to. For instance, imagine our agent first needs to pick up a weapon before attacking. We can easily add a precondition has weapon to our attack conditions and a pick up weapon action which sets has weapon to true. By making these adjustments, our action planner will automatically determine that before we can attack, it must first perform the pick up weapon action. While executing a plan, the world around the AI is changing which can alter one or more preconditions, causing the plan to fail. In that case, the AI will have to reconsider and make a new plan based on the new state of the world. In my opinion, GOPE is very elegant in this way. It allows you to easily create emergent behavior simply by adding new actions and setting our preconditions and effects correctly. The rest is automatically handled by the action planner. All you have to do is give your AI the correct goals and they will make a plan to reach that goal themselves. These are some of the most prominent decision-making algorithms used in games today. What I like most about these is that their basic idea is usually pretty simple. The real complexity of the AI comes from the amount of actions and connections between those actions. But even with a fairly limited set of actions, when you implement them correctly, the AI will start doing things you didn't even think about in the first place, even if they are just a bunch of fancy if statements. That's what makes video game AI so fascinating to me. Sometimes it really seems to come alive. I hope this video gave you some insight into how these seemingly magical AIs work and helped you uncover some of the inner workings of the fascinating world of video game programming. At least, that's what I tried to do. Make all of you a bit wiser.